Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve find first and last position of element in sorting array. Given an array of integers nums, sorting in ascending order, find the starting and ending position of a given target value. Your algorithm's runtime complexity must be in the order of big O of log n. If the target is not found in the array, return minus 1 minus 1. Example 1, this is the input nums, and the target is 8. The output is this array that has 3 and 4. 3 is the first position of the element 8 in this array, and 4 is the last position of the element 8 in this array. 0, 1, 2, 3, the first position, and 4, the last position where this element appears. Example number 2, this is the input, nums, and target equals 6. As you can see, 6 is not in this array, so the output is minus 1, minus 1 to indicate that it was not found. So how can we solve this problem in logarithmic time? Well, a brute force approach is to use binary search to find the value in the array. But you don't know if the value is the first time that it appears, the first occurrence, or if it is the last occurrence. So from that point, after you find that value, you do a linear search to the left looking for the first occurrence and you do a linear search to the right looking for the last occurrence. So in the worst case, the time complexity is going to be linear, it's going to be big O of n. Because even though you used binary search to find that arbitrary value of the target in the array, after that you have to find out the first time that this target appears, and if you do a linear search to the left to do that, and then you do a linear search to the right to do that, in the worst case, you might have to traverse the entire array, so the time complexity would be big O of n. So, can we do better? How can we achieve big O log n time, logarithmic time? Well, what we can do is that we can find the value using binary search, and then we store the, uh, the position where we saw that value. And then, if we're looking for the first occurrence, we continue doing binary search to the left. And if we're, and if we're looking for the last occurrence, we continue doing binary search to the right. And the time complexity in that case would be big O log n, logarithmic time. And the space complexity would be big O of 1, constant time, or constant space. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to write the code. First, I need an array of integer, the final result, initialized to minus 1, minus 1. In case that I don't find the element in the array, I return this. So I will check if nums equals equals null or nums that length equals equals zero, I just return the final result. Then I will get the first position. So integer first gets a value of find in the array nums, the target, and I want to find the first occurrence. So I will say true. So this is going to be a Boolean value. If it is true, it will find the first occurrence. If it is false, it will find the last occurrence in the array. Then, if first equals equals minus one, that means that I wasn't able to find the first occurrence, and that means that the element is not in the array. So I will return the final result, which is minus one minus one, to indicate that the element is not in the array. So I'm done. If I get down here, that means that I was able to find it. So now I need to find the, f the last position where it appears. So integer last gets the value of find in the array nums, the target, and this is the last position I want to find, so I will say false. And then, now I have the first and last position, I will store that in the final result. So result sub 0 gets the value of first, result sub 1 gets the value of last. And then I just return the final result. Alright, so now, I'm going to write the binary search method, the helper method that's going to find the first and last position in logarithmic time. So it's going to be down here, it's going to be private integer find. It's going to take an array of integer nums, integer the target, the number you're looking for, and a boolean first. If it is true, then this method will find the first position of the element in the array. If it is false, it will find the last position of the element in the array. Then I will have my left and right 
for the binary search, my left and right indices. So integer left gets a value of zero, right gets a value of nums dot length minus one, and the final result gets a value of minus one in case I don't find the value in the array. So while left is less than or equal to right, so as long as I have at least one element in the array that I'm looking at, I will, I will say integer mid gets a value of left plus right minus left divided by two, and this will get the middle point, and then I check if non sub mid equals equals the target. So if the target is at the middle, at this position, then I just found the target, and then this might be the first position or the last position if I'm looking for the first or last position respectively. So I just, in case this is the first position, let's say I'm looking for the first position, and in case it is the first position, I will store it in the final result, result gets a value of mid, and then if first, if I'm looking for the first position, I will continue doing binary search to the to the left. So I will discard the right part. So by say right gets a value of mid minus one. Else, that means that I'm looking for the last position of this element in the array. So I will discard the left part by saying left gets a value of mid plus one. All right. Then else if num sub mid is less than the target, that means that the target is to the right, then I can discard the left part because I'm doing binary search. So I can say um, left gets a value of mid plus one, else, then that means that the target is to the left, so I can, I can discard the right part, and I can eliminate that part out of uh, from consideration, so I can say right gets a value of mid minus one. And then at the end, I just return the final result. So I will run the code. All right, I will submit a solution. This is working perfectly. So as you can see, the time complexity is logarithmic, big O log n. And the space complexity is big O of one. If you like this video, please press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And see you next time.